Of all the topics Pope Francis could focus on, he has chosen marriage and the family. And he's inviting the whole church to talk and pray with him about this. Why? Because he knows that healthy, holy marriages and families are key to everything else the church does. If we can help people bring God into their homes, they will be strong and flourish, and both the church and the world will be better for it. In this particular segment, we're going to be focusing on the age range of preschoolers, three to five year olds. And joining me now to discuss this whole area in greater detail, it's a pleasure to welcome Jennifer Barber and Shalia Jones, who are both from the Catholic Social Services Office in Wilkesbury. I'd also like to welcome Bernadette Rudolph, who works for the Diocese as Director of Family and Community Development. Jennifer, I want to start by asking you, when we look at this unique age range of three to five year olds, what would you say are probably the most important things that parents need to know in parenting this particular age group? I think for preschoolers, um, three to five, and really any age, I think the biggest thing for parents to understand is that development um, is so important to learn what they can about a child's development, um, especially at, in the preschool age because there's a lot of behaviors that parents may find troublesome that may actually be developmentally appropriate and helpful. And do you find that in that age range, three to five, that there is an incredible amount of, of development that is occurring in just those two, three years? So much, so much is going on in, in every area. They're growing and changing. Um, they're getting ready to go out into the um, school and preschool and interact, but they're still part of the family. You know. Shalia, I know in your work as a counselor that one of the things you do try to strive when you're dealing with the SAGE group and trying to educate parents is that concept of bonding and interaction. Why is that so important? Um, to have a good relationship with your child is going to be beneficial for you um, in so many ways because um, the more time you spend with your child and the stronger of a bond and relationship that you have, the more that they're going to want to please you and um, want to follow through and, and be part of the family. So the um, recommendation that I always have is spend one-on-one -on -one time with each of your children every day, whether it's 15 minutes, a half hour, whatever you can um, to get on their level. Um, Jennifer and I recommend things like floor time where you get down on their level and play a game that, that they like. Um, bath time is a good time of day. Bedtime activities, we could have story time. Um, Jennifer does something called power stories. Mm -hmm. What are power stories? Power stories are um, taking the time one-on-one -on -one to tell a bedtime story, but you go through their day and emphasize all the positives that they did all day. Right, and you make them into the character in mm -hmm. the story, right? Mm -hmm. So kind of like a superhero mm -hmm. almost. So all the little things, you're, you're focusing on all the little positive things that sometimes parents um, expect their kids to do that, to be cooperative all day, mm -hmm. to do um, everything correctly, and they, d they tend not to praise those things. So you use that power story as a time to make them the character and tell them everything they did great that day. Another area that I think is a, a major concern, especially for this age group, is the whole issue of safety. Why do parents need to be really focused on that for three to five year olds? At this age, they have, um, they're very adventurous. They're very curious. They think they're invincible. Mm -hmm. They are into everything, but they don't understand or recognize the dangers associated with jumping off of a, a staircase or running into the road. They don't understand um, the magnitude of of their their actions mm -hmm. so um, this is a very good time to involve them in, in things like pedestrian safety stranger danger um, bicycle safety mm -hmm. and car seats and booster seats too making sure that they're being used properly Jennifer can you be a little bit more specific in giving us examples of safety and supervision yes I, preschoolers are they, they're beyond the age of basic baby proofing child proofing a home um, but the most important thing for parents to understand at this age is that they still need to be supervised um, pretty much at all times. So an example of that would be they want to learn to ride a bike or ride a scooter and to be giving them that, the independence to do that um, with the parameters of they need to be wearing a helmet and they cannot go into the street or they need to ride in the driveway. So 
giving them the independence to do more, but keeping in mind their developmental capacity that they are impulsive and um, fearless at times. So putting those into place. And I think parents tend to us underestimate the importance of car seats. Why do we really need to stress that? Um, well, it's so important um, because of the number of injuries, especially at this age, and all the way up. Um, children need to be in the back seat of a car all the way up to 11. And I think um, at the three to five age level, parents are eager to get them out of those cumbersome car seats, and they still need to be in them um, until the weight approved um, limit by the law, which is different for every car seat. So they need to be in a front facing car seat um, at least until age four, at which point they need to be in a booster seat in the back seat. <laughs> Shalia, when we're talking about setting up routines and yet maintaining some flexibility, how do you reach that balance? The most important thing to remember is to be consistent. If you are feeling tired or overwhelmed that day or your child is super annoying with their whining and you just say, oh, whatever, just give in, you've kind of given them the green light that maybe next time if I whine enough, I'll, I'll be able to, to have my way as well. So you want to try the best you can. You know, we're not looking for perfection, but the best you can to be, consist be consistent, but also be fair and flexible when the um, certain occasions arise. Maybe there is, you know, the opportunity to have them stay up a little bit later for whatever reason. But you want to make sure that, they're, that you're being consistent with meals and your expectations are, are consistent each day, whether it's, um, giving them reasonable choices. We're, we need to have vegetables or we need to have fruits with our meal, but the flexibility comes in with, um, you know, giving them a choice, a reasonable choice. Do you want this vegetable or this vegetable? Um, so you're being consistent with making sure that they have a nutritious meal, but you're being flexible and allowing them to have a reasonable choice. And why is it so important for parents to be good models? For example, why should parents also focus on good nutrition themselves and actually do what they're preaching. Modeling is one of the most effective ways to teach your children mm -hmm. your values um, and, and the ways to behave. They're, you're their first example of how to, to socialize and get along with others. So we always say, if you don't want your children hitting, then you need to have a no-hit rule in the house. Mm -hmm. If you don't want your children smoking, then you probably shouldn't be smoking around them. Um, just common sense things, but they absolutely pick up on the way that you speak to other members of the household mm -hmm. and the way that you treat them. So you just want to try to emulate and model the type of person that you want them to be. Jennifer, I'd like to take a look at the issue of discipline. What are some of the positive approaches to disciplining a child in this age group? I think for preschoolers, all of the approaches should be kept positive. We should keep it to taking some of those behaviors that are typical of preschoolers, maybe um, the tendency to not want to be cooperative, um, some whining, tantrums, things like that and finding the opposite positive behavior and praising that. So really focusing on all of the positive behaviors that they do do, praising them and keeping the focus on the positives. Shalia, what would be some of the tools that one would use for discipline as far as techniques that you might use? Well, just keeping in mind that um, at this age, they're still gonna need, like toddlers, they're still gonna need constant reminders. Um, a nice way to uh, put the responsibility onto them as they are growing and maturing and taking on more responsibility would be to set up something like a visual chart for them. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we'll clip out photos of or pictures of um, children eating or getting ready for bath time or brushing their teeth and we'll put it on the wall as a chart as a visual reminder. So effectively communicating your expectations in a clear way so that there's no mistaking this is what mom and dad expect from you or this is what grandma expects from you and kind of you know redirecting them to the pictures mm -hmm. and letting them know you know you're a big kid now these are the things that we're, we want you to do and again praising them pointing out you did this that's a great job and, and praising and acknowledging when they do the, do the tasks that you ask them to do I think it really helps uh, with just for example at bedtime mm -hmm. so you're not just simply having to always repeat everything you can say well, if you ask your child are you ready for bed and they say sure I am and you can say 
well, did you check the chart? Right. And then they go to the chart and they can see, oh, I left off a couple of the things. And so you're not so much in the, the bad cop role. Yep. Um, and they're, they're taking on that self-responsibility. Preschoolers love that. They want to yeah. be independent. Mm -hmm. They love to say, you know, somebody to say to them what comes next and to be able to go and look, this comes next. So yeah. it's a positive way. Uh, again, when these children come into our lives, these blessings, they don't come with an instruction manual. So it really is up to parents to stay on top of these matters and educate themselves, especially preschoolers. Why is it so essential for parents to look for any resources they can on this particular age group because of the fact that these children do develop so quickly? It, it, well, it is a time that, that flies by and they're beyond babyhood. They're beyond your regular child-proofing the house and supervising them. They're at an age where they really want to learn mm -hmm. and they really want to interact with others um, so it's important to get that foundation in there at this time and to learn for parents to learn everything that they can about development at this age um, so that they could help guide them through that. Shalia again someone who's watching this interview and, and maybe going through a difficult time raising children uh, especially that age group, uh, what kind of help is out there, for example, through Catholic Social Services? Well, through Catholic Social Services, um, we have family services, we have counseling program. Um, Jennifer and I, we go into the community and do parenting. Um, but one of the recommendations that I make for my parents would be to always stay educated, to self-educate. If you don't have um, access to a community resource, find one, whether it's going on Helpline's website, um, also the Center for Disease Control, CDC, they have a great parenting tab. Mm -hmm. They give you um, great information on all the developmental stages yes, all the do. way to 18. Also um, some parenting techniques that you could utilize positive in positive ways. Um, also, Head Start is a great activity to get your child involved in. Um, and if you think that your child isn't meeting some of the, the milestones that maybe the CDC has, has acknowledged as a milestone, then you can always contact Early Intervention. Mm -hmm. They're from birth to age five, and they'll help um, provide you with therapists to, to get your child back on track. What would you say on a day-to-day -day basis with the clients that you deal with, especially parents of this particular age group, what would you say are probably some of the greatest challenges they face? Some of the greatest challenges would be developing a routine and structure um, because it's so important for this age that they do that, but the key is for parents um, to, remain, to remain flexible with it. Um, but it, it is so important to put a routine in place and have structure in the home, but you need that flexibility and I think that's what they struggle with. And also the need for um, this age, they want to be independent, and you almost have to encourage that. Um, you know, they want to cook with you in the kitchen. They they want to get on the floor and play with you. They want to do all these things. So it's it's just trying to um, do all that to increase the bond with your child before you're kind of sending them out in the world to school. And Shalia, for parents that might be feeling overwhelmed, especially parents who might have several children in the family and are trying to balance, you know, being a parent to so many different age groups. When, when a parent is feeling overwhelmed, what kind of advice do you offer them? Take a breath. <laughs> it's always easier said than done, but find a support. Reach out to somebody, anybody, whether it's a family friend, um, if you're on social media, maybe join a support group with other parents. Um, find ways to reduce your stress, whether it's taking, if you need to walk away for, for a minute to take a deep mm -hmm. breath and come back and approach it with a, a clearer head. Um, that's helpful as well, but just finding ways to take care of yourself so that you're bringing the best of you, yourself to the table as a parent, making sure you de-stress as well. Jennifer, one last question. When you look at this age group, why is it so important that we try to start instilling positive values and positive discipline as early as age three, four, and five? I mean, what kind of an impact does it have on the years that follow? Well, really, you're taking advantage of a time when they are so excited to learn. This is the time when they, you know, they, they want to be big. They, they want to learn and soak up all the information that they could. So it's important to give it to them then when they're developmentally not only just ready to start hearing it, but they're eager to hear it. 
I want to thank Jennifer, Shalia, and Bernadette for taking time out to share your, your pearls of wisdom regarding this particular age group. And right now what we'd like to do is share with you some resources that are available for parents that are dealing with preschoolers.